All right, guys, this is part two of a two-parter on what I care, conceal carry on the Texas Gulf Coast. When I'm fly fishing on the coast, in part one, you saw the rods I carry and reels that I conceal and carry. Um, for those days when things are blown out with wind or weather or you want to prospect. So go back and watch part one if you haven't seen it already on the rod and reel uh, combinations. Um, as I was saying in that previous episode, I am carry TFO uh, travel rods right now, but those will be going away and we'll be slowly but surely replacing all rods with Texas rod or Oklahoma rods. Texas rod being Waterloo, Oklahoma rod, Falcon. So those two guys are contenders for my loyalty. Um, what little of it I have for conventional fishing with a spinning rod. Anyway, that's how that goes. Um, so, part two is about what kind of lures I like to carry. I'm very, uh, very narrow-minded on this. I don't spend a lot of time on it, although I do spend a lot of money on it. One of my favorites from my childhood and up to now has been and always will be mirror lures. This mirror lure right here is brand new. It is exactly the same mirror lure that I caught my first speckle trout ever on a lure was this exact one. So that gives you an idea of how loyal I am. Uh, but of course mirror lure is like a candy store. They have so many different colors. You can't, I can't help but go in and raid the candy store, stick a few in my pocket. Here's two that are already opened right here, same lure. And I get a lot, a lot of blowback from my friends on this because there's a whole nother group of, I mean, I've got so many, so I got two boxes of these guys. I'm very loyal to mirror lure and they, uh, they catch fish for me. I've done that. I've used these lures from here to, to Kathmandu and they work. So mirror lure, I love you guys. You guys are the greatest, you know, the greatest, but DOA, I was down in South Texas the other day, South Padre Island, and they had this thing I went to, and I used a couple of these soft plastics. Now, I don't know much about this stuff. I really don't know much about it. But, I do know that it works like crazy. So the colors that were working down there, I can see if I've got one. Something like electric chicken and stuff, things like, all right, so these guys, man, I don't know much about these guys because I'm a fly guy. This guy right here was slaughtering the fish. And uh, you just got to know how to stick it on a hook and then work it. DOA, I'm coming for you. <laughs> we'll see how this stuff works. Those, that's two things that I carry. The only other thing that comes, look at these guys. I mean, come on. That looks like a fly to me. That looks like a glowing fly that, you know, somebody would tie. It's just turned to rubber. So think about that. <sighs> Drives me crazy. Drives me crazy to think I'll be throwing that stuff someday. But when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Third thing I carry, and it's, uh, it's no big secret. Everybody, everybody who's got a TV show uses them mentions them, doesn't talk about them very much. One last thing everybody should have on the coast, gold spoon. Can you believe these fish on the coast, I don't care if it's red fish, I don't care what it is, will eat a well-made fly, beautiful presentation, while you chunk a piece of metal shaped like a kitchen spoon with a hook on the end of it, Colored gold, they'll eat that too. It's kind of weird, I think, that, that they have such a uh, reactive, broad taste on the Texas Gulf Coast and all along the Gulf Coast, all along saltwater, everywhere. Can't hardly go wrong with a gold spoon, so I usually have three different weights and as many as I can afford to buy, like five of each. Um, getting hard to find for some strange reason. I guess manufacturers have realized that uh, it's the cheapest, most durable, uh, most uh, reliable uh, prospecting uh, hard bait, conventional bait that you can get. And so 
they're probably going to quit making them just because they can make more money on this other stuff but anyway that's it that's the end of part two on conventional fishing on the texas gulf coast with a spinning rod guys you got to do it you got to carry one i had some friends that i was talking to yesterday on the zoom meeting i had for, for the texas fly fishing and 30 mile an hour winds on the texas coast it wasn't raining like this but 30 mile an hour winds so imagine that you you travel hundreds of miles and then you're sitting there with a fly rod and no conventional rod you got to carry conventional rod conventional tackle just a minimum amount of it and then maybe you'll at least feel that tug before you go home thanks for watching guys remember check out part one on the rods and if you have any questions and you know more than i do more than likely your guys that are watching this might probably know more than i do about conventional uh, lures that work please comment you know please subscribe and comment in uh, the youtube channel drop downs there because i'd love to hear from you guys on what you catch on conventional rod and reel on the texas gulf coast and actually if you got a rod that you like or a reel that you like let me know because i'm i'm just at the beginning of this thing and i don't want to go too deep into it because i've got a lot of fly fishing to do but i'd like to have stuff that doesn't lock up when i go to use it when i finally have to use it on the on the gulf coast or any coast for that matter all right guys thanks for watching check out www.texasflycaster.com let me know what you think